welcome to my channel. My name is Miriam and I am a sewing and quilting enthusiast. Um, today I am going to show you a super fun tutorial on how to make a mug rug. The mug rug that I'll be showing you how to make today is this really cute block. It kind of looks like a flower. I was drawn to it as soon as I saw it. It's called the weather vane block and I found it in my, I have this huge encyclopedia of pieced quilt patterns <laughs> by uh, Barbara Brackman. So this encyclopedia is just full of quilt blocks. It's just packed full. And I was just flipping through and as soon as I found this block, I was immediately like, oh, I must make something with this. This is so cute. It's a a little cottage core, a little flowery. I really liked it. So I picked these super cute fabrics to make this uh, mug rug with. I've got a really pretty orange plaid and then this adorable little yellow fabric with these tiny little daisies. I also used a really pretty kind of light sage green for the leaves. And we're gonna make one of these today. So without further ado, I'm going to take you over to my cutting board where I'll, sh I'll show you the fabrics that I'll be using for that one. I'm using the same fabrics, I'm just switching them around so they'll be matching but not exactly the same. So let's get on over to the cutting board and get started. Okay. We are at the cutting board now, so I will uh, tell you the fabrics, the specific pieces that you need to cut. I'm also going to include the list of pieces that you need to cut down in the description box below so you can check that out. What we need from the background fabric, <clears throat> here's this one for reference. So the background fabric is, I use this white, so from that you need 12 one and a half inch squares. I know they're small. It might seem a little intimidating to work with these, but trust me, it's a lot easier than you might think, okay? So we need 12 one and a half inch squares and one three and three quarters square. And with this, we are going to make, we're gonna have that and we have a three and three quarter square of the green. And that's how we're gonna make all of these little half square triangles. I'm gonna show you how to make eight half square triangles at a time. So you need that from the background. Then from the green, we need another, that three and three quarter square for the half square triangles. And four one and a half inch squares and that's gonna be these little pieces right here. Boop, boop, boop. Then for the center piece of the flower, see I just switched the, the fabric. So I'm gonna have the orange be the center and the yellow be the petals this time. So uh, the center piece, we need one two and a half inch square And then for the petals, we need four two and a half inch squares. Okay. And then for the backing, backing of the mug rug, I cut a six and a half inch square. I'm just using that pretty green. I really like that color. <laughs> if you can't tell, it's almost the exact same color as my cutting mat. <laughs> I love green. So, Oh, I'm gonna set that off to the side because we don't need that quite yet. And then I cut a seven inch piece, seven inch square piece of uh, batting. And that's going to go on the inside of our mug rug. So I'm also gonna set that aside because we don't need that quite yet. First, we need to make the quilt block. You can also use this tutorial on how to make this quilt block and just make this quilt block and create a quilt top out of it. Um, so there's all kinds of things that you can do with this block. You don't have to make a mug rug if that's not something you're interested in. 
So first things first, we need to kind of create all of our small pieces. So we're going to start with making our half square triangles. So I'm going to take my background fabric and my leaf fabric. Let's see, what's the right side of this? That's the right side. This has, a, it's actually a white on white pattern with butterflies. So I wanna make sure that I'm using the correct side. So right side up and then I put right sides together. Those two squares, these are our three and three quarter inch squares. Then I'm going to take a marking tool. You can use a pen or a hero marker. I have a, let's see, water soluble pen here. I'm going to use, I really like uh, these markers because the disappearing ink actually does disappear and it doesn't come back when the fabric is heated. So I'm going to take that, my pen, and I'm gonna grab a ruler here, and I am going to draw a line diagonally from corner to corner. Just like that. And then I'm gonna do it on the other side diagonal line from corner to corner, just like that. So your block should look just like that. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch a straight line from corner to corner, a quarter of an inch away from the line that we marked on either side of the line. So we're going to do one line here, one line on this side of it, then we're going to do it on the same, the same thing on this line. So I will take you over to the sewing machine and show you how I do that. So we are going to, like I said, we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of this line. So I'm going to line up my foot with that line and stitch. Now I'm gonna flip it over and stitch on the other side of that line that we marked. So you're gonna have double lines like that. Now we're going to do it on this line, the same exact thing. going to cut through that line that we drew. Just like that. Now we have two pieces, right? Now we cut through the other line on both of those larger pieces. So then it's going to look like that. And we're not done yet. Cause see it's, we don't have half, half square triangles yet, right? So now we're going to cut all four of these in half. So an easy way to do that is we're going to take one at a time and we're going to line up in the center. And if you have a ruler, and it has this diagonal line printed on it, we're going to line that diagonal line up with the edge of the triangle. And that's gonna help us cut a nice straight line. So there, I've got it lined up in the center and then cut. And then I've got, look how cute those are. I've got two one and a half inch half square triangles. And I'm just gonna do that to the rest of them. 
So we get an, a total of eight half square triangles. Okay, I quickly just pressed these open so they are ready to be pieced. Next, we need to make these pretty little pointed petals. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to take our four petal pieces. These are two and a half inch squares. And we're going to take our little one and a half inch squares from the background piece. And we're going to add two to each petal. So we need eight in total for the petals. Okay, I'm back at my sewing machine. So I have one of our petal pieces and then two of the background squares. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them right sides together. And we're going to start in one corner like that. And I'm going to stitch from this corner up to this corner. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. Let's see, can you see those stitches? Yeah, I think you can. Now we're gonna take our scissors, scissors, <laughs> and I'm going to cut this little triangle piece off, leaving a quarter of an inch for a seam allowance. So we're just going to cut like that. See? And then when we open this, I'm just going to finger press it. And there we have half of the petal. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take my background piece and I'm going to put it right sides together on this side. And we want the white overlapping there. See how that overlaps? That's what we want because then we'll get a nice crisp point of that petal. And then I'm going to stitch from this corner, this corner, down to this corner. like that. Let's see, can you see those stitches? Yes. And then we're going to cut leaving a quarter of an inch for our seam allowance. And then just finger press. And then look at that. One petal piece is done. So cute. I'm going to do that for the other three petal pieces. show you the layout of all the pieces. So to make this block, it needs to be done, made in quadrants. So what I mean by that is <clears throat> when you look at this, this little square right here is a quadrant. This is another quadrant and so forth. So there are nine quadrants of this block. So you first have to piece these squares together, that square together, and then you can piece them by row, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've got my reference point here. So we first start with a white square like that. Let me make sure that you can see this, what I'm doing here. All right, so there's this white square right there. 
then I need a half square triangle like that. Then we need another half square triangle. And a full square. And that's going to make one block. So to piece this together, I need to first sew these top two pieces together. And then we sew these bottom two pieces together. And then we sew both of those rows together to make one quadrant of that block. So I'm going to do that here real quick. See, look how cute that is. It's so little. I know sewing with really small pieces can sound kind of intimidating, but it's really not that hard. Um, when you're first starting out, you just need to stitch really slow and make sure that those pieces stay in place while you're stitching your straight line. Once you get the hang of it, you can speed up your stitching and it's actually quite fun working with little pieces. It's very satisfying. <laughs> All right. So there I have my two pieces made. Now I need to sew these together. So I am going to kind of line them up and I want to make sure that the seams here are lined up perfectly and we're going to do what's called nesting the seams which means I'm gonna have this seam on the back going that way. So I'm gonna just finger press it going that way. And then this seam on this top piece, I'm gonna have going the opposite way. So I'm just gonna finger press it. So then when those, when those seams match, then it's like a perfect point. And that's what you want. And that's called nesting seams. So if you ever see that, that phrase, that's what that means. It just helps that seam lay a little flatter. So now we have oops, one of these blocks made. Now we're going to repeat those steps to make three more of these. Okay. So I'm going to do that in kind of a sped up time. So we're not just sitting here watching me sew little tiny pieces. the layout of the entire block and I'm going to show you that here on my table. So first we start I gotta make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. All right start with that. A petal and then another leaf. So that's the first row. Next row is we have a petal sticking out, center piece, and a petal. Then we have the leaf, petal pointing down or up. I guess the way that you're looking at it, it's pointing up. <laughs> Another petal. Oh, look how cute that is. Now all we have to do is sew these pieces together. So we're gonna sew them by row first. So I'm gonna sew row one, row two, and row three. Sew those blocks together, and then we can sew the rows together. So I am gonna sew those up real quick and show you what those look like. Ta-da! Next. Okay, so we have the rows pieced together, and now we are going to sew the rows together to create the block. Put them right sides together, and then you want to line up those points. 
like we did before. And then sew. See? And then sew the next row on, put them right sides together. Line up those points. And there we have the finished block. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I love this block so much. So I'm just gonna take this over and press it real quick. And then I'm gonna show you how I quilt. Okay, I've got my block pressed nice and flat now. It looks super cute. Now I'm gonna grab that seven inch square piece of batting. I'm gonna place it down. And then I'm going to place my block on top. Just like that. Um, you can pin it in place if you want. I found that if you kind of press it with your hands, it kind of sticks to the batting. You know, if you don't really have to baste a tiny project like this, unless you want to. If you want to, you're nervous that it's going to shift and move while you're quilting that's totally fine but I found if I just kind of press it it kind of sticks the little fibers of the batting stick to the the stitches and the the seams of the back of the quilt block so I press it like that then I am going to do like a, I'm going to do the same quilting that I did on my other mug rug which is just kind of really simple straight line quilting I love straight line quilting. It's a lot of fun to do. It's fairly easy to do. It's a great beginner quilting technique. And I just think it looks really good with this block. It it just adds to the, you know, kind of modern cottage core look, I guess. So the way that I draw my lines, because I don't just take it to, I'm not that good. I don't just take it to my sewing machine and zip, zip and do perfectly straight, gorgeous lines. <laughs> I wish I was that good, but I have not reached that skill level <laughs> yet, I guess. So what I do is I mark my quilts. Now there are a few different ways that you can mark your quilts for straight line quilting. You could always use one of these pens that's totally fine. Um, if you're marking an, an entire quilt top, that's gonna use a lot of ink. And, you know, there's always that fear that, you know, I somehow got the pen that it's not going to wash out when I wash my quilt and I'm gonna have blue or purple lines all over my quilt top. And that's just, that's not a fun, fun world to live in. To be worried about that whenever you wash your quilts. So I I don't use a pen usually when I mark my quilts. What I use is this little booger. This is called a Hira marker. Um, it's used to create creases. Uh, I think a lot of tailors use it, but a lot of quilters also use them. So to use it, you just take your Hira marker and I'm gonna use um, my long ruler here and I'm gonna turn this diagonally and I'm gonna line up the ruler with that corner and this corner, if I can do that. <laughs> and then we're gonna get really pretty straight lines. So I do that just like if you're gonna cut something but do not use your rotary cutter. <laughs> ah, that would not be good. We're gonna use the hero marker. And all this is going to do is it's just gonna put a very faint crease in the fabric. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark. You don't have to push very hard. And then you will have, I'm not sure if the camera is even going to pick up the crease, but there is a crease there. It's a little indentation. I can see it. There, you can see it right there. And it, that goes all the way across. So 
that's how you mark it. So then I just take my ruler and I line up the one inch mark with that mark that I just made. And then I mark it again. And then we have two creases. I think you can see that. There you can see it. I think the shadows are hitting right. So now I'm just going to keep on doing that in one inch increments until I reach the end. So now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and stitch straight lines across all of those creases that I made. For a straight line. All right, there is half of the quilting is done. I'm going to mark the the um, mug rug going from here to there, just like we did on the other side, and do the other half of the quilting. All right. The quilting is done. How pretty is that? It looks so good. All right, now all we need to do is we need to trim this down and then finish it up. So it is, we are almost done making this adorable mug rug. So I am going to use my six and a half inch ruler to trim it down. So I'm gonna center it there. And then I'm gonna take, there it is, my rotary cutter. So this makes a fairly large mug rug. I like a large mug rug. They look really cute. And I like to use a big mug because I love coffee. <laughs> so it's a it's a win-win for me. Trim those edges. So if you wanted to use this tutorial to just make the block, then you would obviously skip the quilting process and you would just trim up the block once you were done making it and then use the block for however you want to use it for. So it will be a unfinished six and a half inch block. And then once it's sewn into your quilt, it'll be a six inch finished block. So there's that. So we've got that trimmed down that looks so pretty. Okay, so now all we need to do is add our backing. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to put them right sides together, okay? Looks a little weird, but trust the process, okay? <laughs> we're gonna put them right sides together and then we are going to stitch around the entire outside of this square, but we are going to leave, we're not going to stitch around the entire part because we're going to leave a gap of about three inches on one of the sides that we're going to then use to turn it right side out. So. This is what it's going to look like once you've stitched around. I just used a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. There's my gap that I left open. This is what it's going to look like on the back. There's that beautiful stitching on the batting. And then when you open this, you can see the inside, that's where our quilt block is. So first, before we turn it right sides out, I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm just gonna snip the very corners off of the square. This is gonna help that corner not be so bulky and it'll look nicer but you wanna be really careful not to accidentally actually snip. Let's see, where's the camera? <laughs> snip, oh, will it focus? Snip those stitches right there. Cause then you have to redo everything. So we're just gonna cut those corners real quick. 
it's a little it's a little step but it does make a big difference then we're going to carefully turn this right side out it looks a little bit like a mess but don't worry it's gonna look good So what I do is once I get it turned right side out for the corners, I just kind of roll it like that and that gets it really nice and crisp and it looks good doing that. So I'm just going to do that on each corner using my fingers on the inside of the piece, pushing it and then kind of like a circular motion. You can also use like a chopstick or a pen that does like a, a retractable pen. Let me show you. Like this a little click pen. Don't have the pen part out because it'll mark and that's not fun. But if you have a pen like that, you can use that to push the corner out. So that works too. like that one more corner mug rugs are a really great introduction into quilting if you're interested in quilting but making a huge quilt seems extremely intimidating try a mug rug <laughs> it's basically a mini quilt okay so there we have that now i like to go along all of the edges because it's a little bulky because there is batting in there. And I just kind of do this motion. <laughs> just kind of to roll out the batting so it's laying flat. And that's going to help when we go to top stitch it. So when sewing, whether it's making something like this or if you're making clothes or anything, you're going to see the phrase top stitch top stitch all that means is you're going to stitch a straight line extremely close to the edge so I usually have it about an eighth of an inch from the edge some people will do even closer than that I think an eighth of an inch looks really good so that's what top stitching means it's not some you know extremely difficult technique that you have to practice, practice, practice. It's literally just stitching a straight stitch. So, all right, now we are going to do the top stitching. So first we need to fold in where we had that opening. We need to fold in the raw edges so they'll be concealed inside. I want it to look straight. And if you want to, you can clip it. I'll do that just to show you. I've just got these little quilting clips. You can just clip it into place so that'll hold it together for when we take it over to the sewing machine. All right, now it is ready for top stitching. So the top stitching, it's just gonna look like that. So that little straight line stitched all the way around. So we're gonna stitch all around that mug rug and then it's gonna be done. So let's go do that real quick. Make sure you back stitch so those stitches stay in place. And then I'm just going to trim these little strings. And there we have our finished mug rug. How cute! 
Thank you guys so much for joining me on this fun little tutorial to make this cute little mug rug. It was so much fun showing you how to make this. They are so cute. I want to make like a million more. Um, I really love this block. It's so cute. I'm thinking about making a quilt pattern using this block because it's just so pretty and I want more basically. <laughs> But um, anyways, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I will also leave um, a little link to another one of my tutorials that you can learn how to do foundation paper piecing, which is super fun. And you should definitely give it a try if you haven't tried it already. All right, thank you so much for joining me today and have a great rest of your day. Bye.